So I'm talking to Alice Jin. She's with Kogi Barbecue in LA. You guys are like a mobile Korean barbecue thing. Mexican. Oh, okay. How are you doing? We're doing fine, thank you. So we're at uh, the first stop of the night. Is this the first stop of the night? The first stop of the night, yeah. Okay. Okay. And how many more stops are you guys making tonight? Um, just one more. Okay. Yeah, we have one evening and one late night. I think. Check our Twitter page. Okay. Yeah. So kind of the cool thing you guys do is you send out tweets of where you're gonna be, and the people just show up. Pretty what? much. Yeah. Well, like we do have a schedule on our site, so people can know ahead of time when mm -hmm. we're gonna park. But the Twitter is really useful for when we're gonna be 10, 15, 20 hour late you know or something like that so people right. know and also um twitter is also nice for surprise stops right and uh yeah twitter is actually amazing because i would think like well i know we have like twenty eight thousand followers on our twitter feed but we have our schedule on our website so i think people would check mm -hmm. the website and they'd be fine but um i remember at the restaurant industry conference that we went to um that was hosted by ucla back in march what happened was that uh nobody knew that we were there really or um it was on our site but nobody really knew um and so caroline my sister she said oh can you twitter out our location where it is and um you know i was like okay and uh the thing is it's inside this hotel, the Sheraton, and that's where all the restaurant industry conference people were. So I put it out, and I thought that, you know, people from the restaurant industry conference would leave the conference and come out for a bite. So I thought everybody would come from the hotel. But I saw people walking like zombies, you know, like from the <laughs> other buildings, like office buildings across the street, you know, walking towards us. And they're all, they're all checking their Blackberries. Barbecue. They're all checking. Yeah. Barbecue. And the fact that they're all looking at their cell phones, I knew it was Twitter, yeah. you know. So that was very odd. It's like casting a spell on everybody. Yeah. So how long have you guys been in business? Um, Since Thanksgiving weekend. Okay. So when you guys first um, started, did you guys have social media in mind as a way to kind of get the word out and, uh, and get business? Yes. Well, like um, Mike Prasad, my little brother's friend, he's a social media guru and he's the one who said like, dude, you guys need to get on Twitter. Right. Um, you know, you guys don't know if you guys will be late or if people know your locations. It's better than just having just the website, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we followed his advice and actually worked out well for us. So, you know, uh, Twitter is a really good tool, but I would say that Koki is more than just Twitter. Right. You know, though, though we appreciate Twitter because like, um, you know, Twitter for it to work, you need to get a lot of followers. And in the beginning, we had like, you know, 15, you know, like not a yeah. lot. So like in the beginning, like we couldn't even give our tacos away. So it, it's like you need someone to actually spread the word that we're on Twitter, spread the word that we have a blog and a website. Right. And those people were mostly, you know, the bloggers, especially the food bloggers. They're the ones who got the word out. And that's how people knew where to find us. And that's when it started to kind of build. Yeah. Um, so I would say Pokey is a little bit of everything. I would say a strong component of Twitter is that bulletin board where everybody goes to so they know, you know, where to find us. But it's also the people, it's the staff that, you know, um, come, wake up every morning. They work 14 hour shifts, you know, um, five, six days a week. It's Chef Roy and his cooking because he actually, he's from, um, you know, he's like a, he's a good chef, like he's a top chef. So he has like, uh, good training behind him like he's more classically trained so he has kind of a high-end approach to street food like he uses very special techniques to make sure that you know the food actually tastes up to his standards and then we serve that in taco in a street and I think it's the fact that it's like Korean and Mexican you know and that is you know kind of high-end street food that's affordable so it's a little bit of everything it's the whole concept behind it and for the first time I think in a long time or the first time in the mainstream that I've heard of recently um, is that we have LA fusion food that speaks to LA, that speaks of LA. Um, Cause you know, K-Town it's like Koreans and Latinos, you know, living side by side. But you know, we never had on a large scale, you know, um, a Korean Mexican fusion. Because whenever there is fusion, with the exception of the Asian Latino movement that's been starting in LA a little bit, um, with Cuba to Asia and all these other restaurants, um, I think that most people when they have fusion that's high end, it's usually uh, Japanese, French, Korean, Italian. So mm -hmm. it's always like 
Asian and European, so they need that European or Eurocentric thing to make it high end. And I think that uh, this is kind of a way of saying, you know, that's not necessary. You know, you can do good food. You can do. Uh, you know, four star, five star food, make it affordable. And it doesn't have to have French, Italian, or, you know, like, not that those foods are bad, but, you know, it's like, why not use the flavors that we're used to here? So, right. like, Korean American flavors, Mexican American flavors, and so approaches to that. So, yep. that's a huge part of it as well. So, I'm going to try some of this, uh, hopefully, if I can get in line before you guys move yeah. on. Uh, what should I, um, first time uh, diner with you guys, what should I try? I would say uh, the fallback is a short rib taco and the kimchi quesadillas just because those are the crowd favorites. So I would start with those and then you get to explore into other places. Um, if you can't eat right now and you need a ticket to go, I would recommend the burritos because they keep pretty well and they actually they are pretty good the next day from what I hear. They, a lot of people like to save it for the next day, they eat it with scrambled eggs and breakfast or whatever. Um, and I would definitely try out the specials tonight. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. And, you, and you guys have uh, two trucks. Right now we have two trucks. Okay, you guys gonna do more probably. We, yeah, we have two other trucks in the works. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they'll be up and running. We're training staff for it as quickly as we can to get our trucks out there. Because um, you know we want to cut down on lines and waiting. You know, like we have two trucks and you know the lines already kind of yeah. ridiculous. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, Alice, thanks for uh, talking with me today. Yeah, thanks for your time.